Today, I wanna to talk about the Echo Show 15, why it's horrendously flawed and why no one should buy one. But despite this, I actually still quite like it. And no, I've not gone mad. Not completely anyway. Welcome back to another episode of Steve's Reviews. This episode is sponsored by Locket, but more on those guys later. The Echo Show 15 is Amazon's newest Echo display device. It's certainly not as crazy as the last one I took a look at, the Echo Show 10, with its dystopian head tracking swiveling display, which was actually a really cool device that had some big implications on the future of Echo tech, which I'll touch on again further in this episode. But this particular one is a little less wow and a bit more, hmm. But before I talk about my reasoning behind this, let's take a look at the specs. At 15.6 inches, the 1080p touchscreen panel on the Echo Show 15 is the biggest we've ever seen in an Echo device. It's evidently designed with a picture frame aesthetic, with a few physical buttons blending in on the side of the device, which offer the same control as the rest of the Echo range. There's also a privacy cover slider to shut off the camera if you feel like the lizard alien overlord Jeff Bezos is watching you from his spaceship. The rear is just as spartan, featuring a few minimal cable runs and mounting options, along with the speaker holes for the inbuilt twin 1.6 inch audio drivers. The new AZ2 chip is the Echo Show's brand new brain, so let's get right in there to do some dissecting and take a closer look. When this device got announced, I was super, super excited. The whole premise is that this is almost a central dashboard point for your home, one that everyone in the family can use, customize, communicate with, displaying personalized content and information such as photos, calendars, news, to-do lists, weather, and other stuff. But it also wants to offer a bit of cross-communication between users too, along with all of the standard smart home controls the Echo devices have to offer. Now, the reason I was so excited, initially anyway, is that I've been using a service called Dashboard, which creates a dashboard for your home to display pictures, calendars, reminders, weather stocks, and so on. And it has some great third-party support and integration with things that I use, like iCloud, Apple calendars, Todoist for task management, and other sorts of stuff. But the only problem with Dashboard is that it doesn't have any smart control. It's purely just a display. And also, in the form I'm using it, it's a bit of a Robinson Crusoe device made from a Raspberry Pi plugged into an old monitor. It looks neither neat nor sophisticated, but I could make it a bit neater. I just decided to stop the project when I heard that Amazon were releasing this, which appeared to be similar but with the added smart home functionality. Amazing. What could possibly go wrong? Before we talk about that, I do want to mention the design because I actually think they've gotten it quite right. I'm a big fan of devices that don't look too intrusive in the home environment, and this slots really neatly with its kind of picture frame aesthetic. It is a bit thick, so it does stand out from the wall, but it's not obtrusive. My only comments on this really would be the, the size and the color. It would have been nice if there'd been a few more options, maybe some choice of frame, potentially a wooden veneer or a gold frame, something that I can customize and have fit my aesthetic in my house, perhaps even if it was interchangeable. Now, I think there's actually a real market here for a third-party provider to make some thin external frames that just slot around it. I'm gonna patent that idea. But there's one other design addition that isn't mentioned anywhere on the website. And that is that on the back, it would appear to have a Visa compatible mounting hole. Now these holes are shown to be compatible with the extra stand that you can buy for it. And although I haven't tested this out, the measurements of these screw holes are exactly 100 mil by 100 mil, which is standard Visa it would make sense because it means you can angle it out from the wall then. Now, if anyone's actually managed to test this Visa compatibility, please let us know in the comments and I'll pin it to the top. But hold on one moment. There's one other design choice I want to discuss, which has royally 
ticked me off. Look at the size of the cable. Look at it. This thing is absolutely tiny, uh, only one meter long, which means if you wanted to use this included cable, you're massively restricted about where you mount this thing. And that's for something that's designed to supposed to fit anywhere on your wall. I mean, there's not even enough height for me, to, for it to be at eye level for me. They should have at least included a two meter cable as standard. It is ridiculous. So that's the design. What about the hardware? Now this is where things start to take a really funny turn. Amazon have made some very strange choices with the hardware in this device. The screen is 1080p, which is sufficient. And although it's not incredible, it is the best resolution you'll find on an Echo Show device. But the camera they've added is five megapixels, which is down from the Echo Show 8 and 10's 13 megapixel camera. Now this seems like a little bit of an odd choice in my opinion, but fine, okay. It gets weirder. This device is touted as the hub of the home, the central point to your smart system that the whole family can interact with. So guess what it's missing? An actual smart hub. This thing, unlike the Show 10 or even the Echo 4, doesn't have a built-in Zigbee home hub. Why on earth does this not have a Zigbee home hub built into it? This thing is perfect for it. It sits on the wall. It is the stationary device in your house. Everyone interacts with it. It is the hub of the home, as they kept on telling us in the event where they announced it. Why on earth have they not put it in? Because it's the same price as the Echo Show 10. Exactly the same price. And I'll get onto this in a little bit, but it's just... I can't fathom why they haven't included one. Moving on. The speakers are actually all right. They don't compete with any of Amazon's larger speaker-centric devices at all, but they're certainly capable and decent enough to listen to music from. I was actually pleasantly surprised by the sound that these things produce considering the form factor. Lastly, in terms of hardware, they've included the new AZ2 chip, which is supposed to reduce latency and create a faster experience with Alexa overall, something for which the most part seems to have done. The AZ2 also allows for visual identification on device as well, which seemingly identifies you quite quickly using only the onboard camera. Quite surprising, given the low quality of the sensor. But this brings us nicely onto the software. And if you agree with me about the hardware choices being just a little bit strange, then just you wait. Now the OS is very, very similar to the other Echo Show devices, just with a, with a few standout changes. The first thing that you're greeted with is the new redesigned home screen for the 15 inch display. You can have this in either landscape or portrait, but either way, it divides the screen up into your home content, which consists of photos, top news stories, weathers, and other things that you can select within the app. And then on the other side of the screen, you've got the new Alexa widgets, which are supposed to give you quick access to certain actions. Now, I've got some massive bones to pick with this feature. Firstly, it's evident that there could potentially be widgets from third-party developers, although I can't find any evidence of any third-party widgets in existence or even development, and certainly not from any of the skills or services that I use. Now, this leaves me with only a handful of Amazon-made widgets to choose from, most of which offer no value to warrant clogging up the space on the screen. Now, the ones I've chosen are the shopping list, sticky notes, smart home, and the weather. Interestingly, let's say I don't want these widgets and just wanted a photo clock. I can remove them all and it does just that. But maybe you want to add just two widgets to complement this while still having a large selection for photos. Look what happens. It takes up half the bloody screen display space with empty space. What is this fresh hell? Now your only option is then to add a further two widgets to fill 
this space. Utterly ridiculous. So you end up with a really tiny photo display with a gigantic clock over it. And this also has issues. The clock disappears each time a photo changes, which is distracting. And you can't change how this transition, transition happens either. You can't choose the size, the position, the font, or the color of the clock either, nor can you change the color of the background behind the widgets from blue. Also, whenever the Echo picks up a visual identity, it starts the whole carousel of photos over and over, displaying the same photo multiple times if several people are walking in and out of the area this is in. Now you can choose to place it in photo frame mode so that the entire screen is a photo, which does negate some of the issues that I've just mentioned. But again, you've got so little control over the experience, it makes me feel claustrophobic. You can't change the time the photos display for. You can't change how they're displayed. You can't change how they transition, whether they appear in cropped or full screen or the border style. You are stuck with that awful Gaussian blur effect, which is the default and only option if your photos are, say, portrait and you have it in landscape. Actually, integrating your photos is a bloody nightmare as well. With Dagboard, I could simply point it to an iCloud album URL and it just pulls the pictures from there. Job done. But apparently, this is not the case with Amazon. And actually, this was the first time I was looking to integrate my photos with an Amazon device. So I was a little bit inexperienced in the how-to. So I'm sat here, sifting through the settings on my phone, and I'm seeing no mention of third-party support other than Facebook, which no one has posted a photo to since 2012. But then I come across Amazon Photos, unlimited storage for Prime members. What? I had literally no idea about this. How long have I been an Echo user, a Prime member, and not known about this? Unlimited storage is pretty cool, but it's a massive faff and super frustrating that there's no support for iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, or Google Photos, which are some of the biggest names in cloud photo storage. This is a really clever, albeit a sneaky play by Amazon, as it means that it will educate people about this free unlimited storage and shoehorn them into using that part of their service and potentially converting customers into paying for extra storage for videos or perhaps converting them so that if they cancel their Prime membership, then they would still be, continue paying for that photo service and maybe converting people who are just not users of the service at all. But I've noticed a real pattern of subversive actions by Amazon recently to make more money, such as including a ton more ads on their premium services or on their devices, like the sponsored row on the Fire TV stick, which is inherently annoying, or even things like placing the new Alex Rider series on the Amazon-owned IMDb TV app, which has ads on it rather than putting it on Prime Video, which is what we pay for in the first place. This is getting out of hand. They are going rampant with ads and finding such sneaky ways to include ads and services. And the Alex Ryder series going on IMDb, IMDb TV, which is Amazon owned, with ads is an exact example of our internet streaming service starting to implement ads, which is coming, I can guarantee it right now, and we're letting Amazon do it because we're not complaining about it. But I'm complaining about it. And if you want to complain about it, tell me how much you hate Amazon ads in the comments below. Tell Amazon. Let them see how annoyed we're getting with them putting ads on all of their devices in sneaky little ways. Okay, I'm going off on a tangent. That's enough of ranting. Now let's talk about this device as a central point to your smart home. Now, one of the things I had hoped for was that this could be used as a smart home dashboard, but no, this thing has to be the most unoptimized part of the entire experience. Firstly, the widget can only display three clickable smart home items without having to scroll. Limiting, but okay, not okay, because the only things you can have here are singular devices. You can't have groups and you can't have routines either. This is inherently useless because who here controls just one smart home device at a time? 
I bet my entire whiskey collection that the majority of you have less than five singular devices in your home that you control exclusively on their own. But either way, for me, most of my control is done through routines or groups, none of which you can select in your favourites. You would think that if that's the case, then surely going into the main smart home tab in the swipe down menus would give me a more central control view that I'm after. No, of course not. Instead, it gives you this awful long slide bar like on the smaller Echo Show devices. Why? I mean, I got it with the devices like the Echo Show 5, which was tiny, but this is 15 inches. Why has this not been made into a proper dashboard? It's just so poorly optimized for this form factor, and that poor optimization is seen across the entire OS. Like when I ask it to put something in my shopping list, it brings up the entire screen as the shopping list, instead of just using the widget that's on the home screen in the first place. The same goes to be said for music. The whole screen is taken up by a static album cover. Yes, I can go home or dis ask it to display photos, but I don't want to have to do that every single time I play music. It's just a faff. I mean, nearly 75% of the display is taken up by blank space when listening to music. Why not just put a simple display control and a what's playing or what's next in a widget? Perhaps the only thing that is optimized well is the integration of devices like the security cameras and the ring doorbell. When the ring button is pressed, it shows a live feed on the Echo Show. Now, if you're using it on the home screen, this will appear full screen, but if you're saying music or using a recipe, it will actually display picture in picture, which is cool. But perhaps the only thing I've found that has been truly optimized for the size of this display. And unarguably though, it makes the Echo Show a very, suitable companion for devices like the Ring Doorbell. And if you do use the Ring Doorbell alongside your Echo Show 15, it could actually save you money. And this is where this month's sponsor comes in. Locket is perhaps one of the most interesting services for the smart home enthusiast that I've come across because it actually rewards you for having a smart home. Unlike many insurance providers out there, Locket takes into account your smart home tech to give you a fairer price on your home insurance. When you download the app, you can manually add what smart home security devices you have, or you can ask Lockit to scan your network to automatically discover the devices. Lockit will then apply a discount based on how well protected your smart home is. Not only this, if you wanted to get your hands on more smart home tech to get even more discounts on your insurance, you can buy supported products directly in the app and often at a discount too. If you want to check Lock It Out, I'll leave a link in the description. And if you want to find out a little bit more, I've actually taken a further, more in-depth look at Lock It and how they're changing the face of insurance for anyone with a smart home in a full episode, which can also be found at the links below. But back to the new OS. During the announcement, they made a massive song and dance about how different users could customize the information that would show on the screen based on the visual identification that I mentioned earlier. Well, guess which feature isn't here at launch for me to test? This is really annoying because I was really looking forward to this feature. It's one of those little hints and telltale signs that Amazon are dropping to show us what the future of Echo devices is going to be like. Now, I mentioned in my Echo Show 10 review that Alexa knows where you are. She knows what you sound like. And now with the AZ2 and the Echo Show 15, she can tell who you are by just looking at you and display certain content based on who is interacting with the device. Now mark my words, it will not be long before these devices become aware of your attention, very much like the Face ID function on the iPhone. And then it will use that to serve us proactive responses to questions or even commands, even without wait words. It's just a shame that I don't even get to test that visual serving of information yet. Now at the moment, the price you'll be paying for the displeasure of using the Echo Show 15 is the same as the Echo Show 10, as I mentioned at 239, which is not unreasonable. Imagine you made something like the DAC board for yourself. You'd be paying near that for a decent monitor, a Raspberry Pi and all the gubbins to make it actually look good. But is this worth 239 pounds? 
The thing is, it's not a terrible device. It's terribly optimized, and the software is just not suited to this form factor, but the hardware, for the most part, is sufficient. Like I said at the beginning, I would have liked a better camera, more frame options, and a longer cable, but these are just superficial requests. The actual device itself is all right. As for its looks, I do quite like the pitch frame aesthetic they've gone for. It's just very, very difficult to look past the fact it seems to be plagued with little problems due to a lack of optimization. Very little support from third party developers. Well, actually none, but it also offers so little control it makes me want to pull what little hair I have left out. Now it would appear that on the surface that the creative lead behind the OS either hates smart homes or cares not about user satisfaction and wants to squeeze as much profit out of this device as possible. Or maybe a mixture of both. But despite all of what I've just said, I kind of still like it. I guess maybe not the device itself, but I like the idea of what it's trying to be, even if at the moment it's failing at that miserably. I am excited with what Amazon and third, third party developers could do with this device because it has potential and only time will tell if its potential is released. And for that reason, at the time of launch right now, without any updates, I would not recommend that you buy one. And that concludes my thoughts on the Echo Show 15. What, what do you think? Do you think it's the best product that Amazon have ever made or is it inherently useless? Do pop your thoughts in, in the comments below so we can all have a good chin wag over it. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up, subscribe and notification bell to see more episodes when they land. And also, if you are in utter disgust at the amount of ads Amazon are putting on stuff. Again, share that opinion below. But other than that, guys, thank you very much for joining us today, and I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon. Was that a bit ranting? I think I ranted a bit too much there. Hmm.